So in general, Fubini's theorem says, we have the following case for double integral. We have a theorem, Fubini's theorem says, if F is continuous on a rectangular region as follow, on the rectangular R equals to, well, you have all X and Y's such that X is bounded between A and B, Y is bounded between C and D, if you have the following condition for the function be continuous, then the double integral of your function over R can be broken down into the integral of f of x and y with respect to x while x range between a to b then with respect to y, y ranges between c to d. Or it can be written as the integral of f of x and y with respect to y, while y ranges between c to d, then with respect to x, while x ranges between a to b. So, as long as you have a continuous function over a rectangular region, you're allowed to use either of these methods to calculate the double integral. Sometimes the double integral is asking about the volume. Sometimes it's asking about different things. So if you get a negative number, it doesn't represent the volume, guys. Let's go over one example. Example. Evaluate the following double integral. The double integral of your z is x minus is your ceiling 3y squared dA over region R. Region R is given to you as all x and y's. Cartesian product between 0, 2, and the y is bounded between 1 and 2. Okay, perfect. So let us check the theorem. Does this function satisfy the condition of the theorem? Is this a continuous function? Of course, it's a continuous function, it's continuous everywhere. It's in the form of a polynomial function. It's continuous. And you have a rectangular region. And since this guy is continuous everywhere, it's definitely continuous on the region. So you can either apply the first method or the second method. It doesn't matter. Both of them give you the exact same value. So the double integral over R of x minus 3 y squared dA is let us apply the very first method. Let us calculate the inner integral with respect to x. So it's going to be written this way. We have the integral of the function x minus 3 y squared dx. My x is in between 0 and 2. It ranges between 0 and 2. Then I'm going to take the integral with respect to y, while y ranges between 1 and 2. Okay. So let me use a different color for this. Outer integral with respect to y, inner integral with respect to x. Okay, here we go. This guy is equal to the outer integral 
with respect to y, one to two. And let me just type this, I'll write this right here. Now, taking the integral with respect to x. The integral of x is a half x squared minus three y squared times x, while x is in between zero to two. Okay, so far so good. Again, recall that the integral of x dx is a half x squared plus constant integration, but we are, we're not really worried here. We're calculating the definite integral. This is equal to integral one to two. Now let us plug in two, then we plug in zero. Zero doesn't actually change anything because it's going to be zero. We're going to have a half times four minus three times two y squared minus the zero and the dy. So this is equal to integral one to two of dy of two minus six y squared. Now we are taking the integral with respect to y. This becomes The integral of two dy is two y minus six divided by three y cubed, while y ranges between one to two. Okay, simple integral, what you learned before in elementary calculus. Now plug in two, then plug in one and do the subtraction here. Six divided by three is two. So simplify that, you get two times two minus two times eight minus two minus two. So you get four minus 16, this is just a zero. The outcome is negative 12. We just calculated a double integral. It doesn't have to be the volume or anything like that. It's just a negative number. So I expect you to ask, what if I apply this method? Why not? Let us apply the second one and show you we get the exact same value. So let me write or. It's unnecessary to do that, just a practice, good practice. Now suppose your outer integral is with respect to x. So your x range is between 0 to 2. And your inner integral is with respect to y, 1 to 2. And your function is x minus 3 y squared dy and then dx. You always start by taking the integral with respect to the inner variable that you're working with. Sometimes you can separate these two integrals, but it's a special case that we're going to discuss later. So this guy is equal to, well, here you have your outer integral with respect to x, 0 to 2. And let me write dx here. And we get xy minus 3 divided by 3y cubed. And here y between 1 and 2. Okay, this guy is equal to. Now you have your integral 0 to 2 of dx, and you get xy minus y cubed, and just simplify this, 1 to 2, let us plug in 2, then plug in 1, simplify this guy. Let me just calculate this. So we have 2x minus 8 minus x minus 1. And then we take the integral with respect to x. 0 to 2. 2x minus x, x negative 8 plus 1 minus 7. dx. So now we are taking the integral with respect to x. I have x squared minus 7x 
x is in between 0 to 2 again. We don't care about 0 because it makes the whole terms equal to 0. Just plug in 2, get a half times 4 minus 14 to minus 14, which is, as we saw before, negative 12. So it doesn't matter which method you're applying. As long as your function is continuous on the rectangular region, you should be 